In this video, we're going to show you how to pass a data set name as a variable from a control O on DSN event rule to a control M job definition. When the control O product is installed, we provide you with a number of sample rules tables. Among those samples are, is a table called CTM APIF. And in that particular table is one rule called job name, which is the one that we're going to be using. Now, job name is provided as a template for you to use, or template or skeleton, to create any number of on data set event rules, which will all have the same functionality, that being to trap a data set event save the data set name as a variable and then invoke a process to pass that variable over to a control M job definition where it will be defined in the set var field. So let's go ahead and see what this rule is going to do. Of course on DSN event job name will be whatever the name is of the job, the started task or the TSO user ID that you intend to monitor. The DSN field will contain the fully qualified data set name of the data set or GDG. Disposition in this particular case defaults to catalog, but it can be any number of different uh, events that you want to trap. When defining this rule, the first thing you'll do is you'll copy this template over to another rule, and that's where you'll make your changes. I've taken the liberty of doing that, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to watch a job called catalog2 for the data set event of catalog for the data set name of rdcdap.testrule. When this rule is triggered, the first thing we'll do is we'll set the SCH lib variable to be the name of the control M scheduling library where my job resides. We will then set SCH mem to be the name of the table where the control M job definition resides. We will then set SCH job to be the name of the member, the job definition itself. In most cases, SCH date can be left at the current scheduling date, or you can change that to be whatever you want. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn resolving of auto edit variables off. And we're going to do that so that we can create this literal string of percent percent DSN parm equals percent percent dollar sign DSN. This is the value that will appear in the set var field of the control M job definition. In this case, percent percent dollar sign DSN is a system variable that will resolve to the name of the data set that triggered this rule in the first place. We'll then go ahead and turn resolve back on and then we will gather together the parameters for the job definition, the set var parameters, and we will pass them as arguments to the program called CTO CTMF. Now I've taken the liberty of already ordering this thing out there. So we're going to go to screen three where we're going to find my wait for confirmation job. There it is. And we're going to go ahead and confirm it. Okay, and we could tell that it's already done what it needed to do. So catalog 2 was the job that cataloged the data set. And my job, DAP job, is the one that came out of the rule. So when we zoom this job definition, you'll see that the set var field is populated with the variable from the rule and the fully qualified data set name of the job in question. And as you know, um, if you've worked with Control M, you can use the set var field of the job definition to pass any number of variables to the actual JCL of the job involved.